good morning all the viewers and listeners of this youtube channel we are here back again with our webinar series and today uh, 20th may we have guests uh, from uh, dr mohammad shahadat hussain and uh, doc i now invite dr imran ullah khan to introduce him before the talk begins uh, thank you sir good dr. morning uh, all of the participant and uh, i i am very uh, thankful to the sir that uh, he has uh, accept my invitation and uh, uh, spare time from his due due uh, chaudhary sir actually uh, has uh, mphil from uh, university of manchester and uh, also his phd is from university of manchester he is the senior member of ipl and mbcs He is a research fellowship of Commonwealth, Ramos Mons, and you know, he is a professor in Department of Computer of, of Science, Computer Science, and University of Chittagong, and visiting academic staff the University of Man Manchester, UK, and also the vis visiting scholar professor, MRS Mendes Joint Master Program, Europe. He is also the visiting professor, Yale University of Technology, Sweden. so i welcome sir and uh, it is a very proud moment for us that uh, sir is with us so i invite sir for his uh, informative lecture and you will surely get benefited uh, by the uh, lecture of the sir sir please sir now stage is yours okay thank you thank you very much uh, uh, for the invitation and the nice introduction so it is really a great pleasure for me to have the scope to talk in this important series of webinar organized by the one of the very reputed university located in lucknow so i decided to deliver my talk in the area of uh, evaluation of artificial intelligence since i am teaching this subject as well as doing substantial research in this area for last 20 years so Uh, let, let me start uh, is my lecture and here is a brief outline and first i will introduce myself and then i will talk about the evaluation of artificial intelligence which includes its birth and its challenges and where it is now and its different generations and i would like to share my some ongoing research in this context and then if time allow uh, uh, that is uh, i will introduce a, a new paradigm of computing uh, which is called brief rule based expert system which uh, fits with the different evaluations of artificial intelligence let's explore so as mentioned i did my mphil as well as uh, my phd from the university of manchester institute of science and technology uh, it is uh, now all the university of manchester and alan turing also uh, was a professor in the same department where i did my phd and you know alan turing is the father of artificial intelligence and manchester is famous for first industrial revolution as well as uh, world first a stored program computer invented in my department and i got number of fellowships like tindall commonwealth erasmus mondus world bank and uh, i am trying to do substantial research and so far uh, i published 170 plus research articles in reputed journals and conferences and published four books and i am editor of a uh, number of the spinger book series and my h index according to google scholar 25 and scopus 20 and uh, you know bangladesh and you can see in this map uh, chitagong and this is my department of computer science and engineering at university of chitagong and currently i have been appointed as a guest professor at the luli university of technology and sweden along with i am also working as a visiting scholar professor uh, in europe as a part of a erasmus mondus joint masters program 
So let's uh, come to our lecture, Evaluation of AI. So actually, I would like to start uh, uh, this uh, talk uh, by referring an important quote given by Edward Fred King, who is a eminent physicist and computer scientist of our time, uh, working in Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, there are three important things in the history of civilizations. It's very important. One is the you can see creation of the universe and then the appearance of life in that universe. And the similar importance to creation of universe or appearance of life is the appearance of artificial intelligence. And I would like to make this point clear why this artificial intelligence, importance of artificial intelligence is similar to the creation of universe or the appearance of uh, human life. So uh, actually, uh, you know, Alan Turing, who is a German court breaker during Second World War. And because of his, uh, I think, England win against Germany. And in 1950, he is a very seminal paper written in a journal called Mind, published in 1950. And the research questions for artificial intelligence research are uh, mentioned by him that, that is, can machine things, then uh, can we make a machine which will able to think? And still, till now, we are trying to answer these questions. However, Alan Turing died in 1954. Uh, and in 1956, there was a conference organized by John McCarthy and Marvin Minoxi uh, in 1956. And John McCarthy is pioneering uh, to coin the term artificial intelligence. And we are getting the term artificial intelligence basically from that conference in 1956. Uh, and uh, first electron, electronic neuron uh, we are getting uh, out of the research of McKellen and Pitts, as you can see in 1943. This is also a breakthrough uh, in AI research. Although we are talking about uh, AI uh, from 1950, actually the idea of AI around us uh, before that, uh, uh, if you can have a look at German philosophers like the Descartes or Leibniz, they have been also uh, thinking about that. So let's uh, share some uh, just glimpse of uh, interview with John Doing McCarthy. Problems, uh, and if you have time, can you can watch have... this video because we have less time. But the uh, main thing John McCarthy mentions, and John McCarthy later uh, joined Stanford University, where he established the uh, robotics lab, as well as the Marvin Minoxi. I uh, also work with uh, institutes in technology and pioneering establishing artificial intelligence lab. And according to John McCarthy, and he's also the father of language like the Leaps, uh, that the AI has some conceptual problems. And actually, basically, it's a decision problems. And the most important thing that we need to handle uh, non-monotonic type of problem most of the times uh, because real world is, is very much complex in nature. And now the question is, uh, uh, what is the reason that is, uh, if a uh, thing is natural, why we need to convert it into artificial. If you have a look at first industrial revolution, uh, to me, from the uh, objective of any revolutions is to convert the natural thing into artificial. If you can convert the natural things into artificial, there are three important impact you can do notice. One is the things become cheap and you can produce abundance and the, you can ensure the quality of things. And uh, first industrial revolution basically concerned with uh, transforming or the change uh, the natural energy through steam engine into artificial uh, uh, energy. So that's why you can see that there are a lot of industries and uh, increase in the production and as well as to some extent the uh, increase uh, in the 
uh, livelihood of the human being, for example. But there are some problems as well because people move from countryside to the uh, town and there are some complex problems whether we are ready for that. And if you have a look at second industry revolution, actually it considered the transformation of natural light uh, into artificial lights and 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 this light become cheap and abundance and you can see there are quality of productions that exchange the civilizations as well and in the third industry revolution which is mainly focused on the automations computer and uh, ict so it's also make a tremendous change in our life and now we are living in the fourth industry revolution higher i think artificial intelligence is the main workhorse and it, if you can embed this artificial intelligence in yourself or in the society then it will make tremendous change so the problem is that uh, we have natural intelligence and if we can convert this natural intelligence into artificial intelligence uh, if we can make the intelligence cheap then it, we can produce in, in abundance and then uh, the things is that uh, it will become uh, we can at the same time we can ensure the quality so if we so actually in artificial intelligence we are uh, trying to achieve this and, and uh, it, it, however there are some uh, problems uh, uh, reasoning and then the designing of the systems uh, whether the adaptive system to this out of this according to say for example darwin uh, nature natural selections are survival of the fittest according to him sometimes the nature system adapt itself also there are some issues as well so from this perspective that we can divide the science into two two types so one is the natural science and the artificial science and computer science and engineering or tripoli or other sciences are the example of artificial science and uh, if we can uh, make the our home artificial uh, then what will happen uh, more, more there is a plan that more than half of Homes in North America could be a smart or artificial by 2024. If you can make your house smart or the intelligent, then the, uh, the productivity or the quality of living style will tremendously increase. And, and if we can automate our everyday activities, uh, it will result increase in quality of life, hence increase the human productivity. This is very important. So let's uh, take an example of uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, Jarvis, who has spent a year to develop this system. Just I am running this. Shoo -shoo. Jarvis also helps me get ready in the morning. Fresh shirt, firing the hole. And then just tell me about it. Mark, your parents are coming in. That was actually a test. So you, you can see that there is some issues of facial recognition or communication. If we can automate this, so a lot of research is going on in this area as well. So if you, in this way, you can make your home smart and eventually the livelihood of every household uh, will increase tremendously. And you know about the social robot, uh, Sophia. This is another example where A is done today. So you know, Saudi Arabia is a conservative country, but Sophia performed to so well, uh, they give citizenship to Sophia later on. And uh, uh, you know, every, everybody of us now using the smartphone and smartphone has uh, uh, enormous uh, sensor embedded in them and which is embedded to intelligence so actually we are living in intelligence world today and we are uh, using some sorts of artificial intelligence and intelligence is everywhere where it is in cctv or camera whatever you can see so what is the benefit and you know about the internet of things that is the things will communicate through the internet uh, so actually this gives us a huge amount of uh, sources and now, now it is about 75 billion devices are connected to Internet of Things and 5.7 billion mobile phone users are available 
uh, in this planet. And, and uh, we have uh, seen that 50% organization in the world are adopting artificial intelligence to support their at least one of the functions. So that's why you can see there is a competition between especially China and USA. That is how you adopt the artificial intelligence uh, in the business. So from this graph, you can also see some data about this. So if you can connect the devices with the Internet of Things, what types of benefit it will bring? So, uh, so for example, if a thermostat, uh, a simple programmable thermostat which will control the cooling and heating uh, it will save 160 dollar per year on energy cost so this scenario you can analyze in every sector if you can make the things intelligent not smart in the railway or the aviation or healthcare power oil and gas so in this way you can see the our efficiency and the productivity will eventually increase and due to the internet of things social media uh, we have basically entered into a new era we are getting big amount of data what is big data that is the when the size of the data is more than nine gigabyte then we can uh, call it big data so that's why you need to uh, think about the uh, petabyte of data terabyte of data uh, and big data might be petabyte uh, so so the problem with this uh, internet of things or the big data is that they are empirical in nature uh, but the problem with that uh, that is we if we can add the uh, analytics uh, within the big data we can discover so many intelligence informations so actually uh, uh, if we uh, so this is an example of data center uh, what the point i would like to make about the internet of things and the big data or the artificial intelligence in intelligence uh, uh, that is uh, if we can uh, embed uh, artificial intelligence with the big data we can understand the pattern of uh, Phenomenon. Actually, we don't need any mathematical equations right now. Actually, we look at the pattern of the data. A pattern of the so this pattern of data basically the uh, formula for uh, a specific problem domain. So this enables us to have complex mathematical equations to explain a complex phenomena. So we need to uh, understand this. So only the implementation of Internet of Things or getting the big data will make you no sense if you can't embark in intelligence with them to understand the uh, pattern of phenomena. And uh, uh, that's why we need to add learning ability or the thinking uh, which require lots of uh, cognitions uh, and the learning should need to be deep. I'm coming to this point very soon. Uh, and uh, uh, that is just a minute. Okay. So I think before that I miss a slide. I think, okay, this is, this is very important. So uh, that is, you can see now, I would like to uh, divide the generations of artificial intelligence in three types. Uh, one is the symbolic artificial intelligence, which is good for the reasoning uh, purposes, uh, or it allows some sorts of thinking. But the problem with the uh, symbolic AI, it cannot uh, represent the common sense knowledge, and it, it does not contain any learning ability. Uh, and, and that's why we need to uh, go for another generation of artificial intelligence, which is mainly focused on the learning. Uh, and using this learning module, like this, various types of machine learning man, method, what we can see, uh, that is, uh, uh, just think about that. If you make the prediction uh, of things very cheap, then what will happen to your business? So this is a kind of uh, implications of artificial intelligence. But the problem, again, with this type of uh, learning module that we are now residing, it's a very black box uh, in nature. So that's why we have some serious uh, research uh, challenges ahead. So that's why explainable AI now we are thinking about, uh, which basically try to make a trade uh, between the uh, predictions and as well as the uh, explainability. We are also doing some research in this area. So here 
already mentioned about this and about the learning now we are talking about the deep learning because we are getting lot of data and in the traditional machine learning you can see in between the data and the method we need to have, have some human interventions which will make our system much lower but if we can uh, just put the raw data into our methods and we can classify or predict the things then this will become uh, more easier so i think deep learning is all about that and uh, now 21st century is uh, can be considered as a sensory of brain informatics because the human brain is the most complex phenomena so you know about the uh, elon Musk uh, neural links what he's trying to do he's trying to implant uh, chips in the human brain maybe he will go for human trial uh, this year if you can implant some microchips that is uh, that is the brain human interface then you can uh, control or understand the signals of uh, that so you know so uh, some neurons are responsible for controlling your hand or the limb or a factor or actuator the muscles uh, so uh, if you can do this uh, so uh, you can uh, uh, help the uh, the patients who have paralyzed this type of thing. So uh, if you think about the Stephen Hawking, his problem is a neurological problem. So I'm thinking that uh, if uh, we get uh, Elon Musk, this implant, micro implant, uh, some few years back, then we can able to recover the disease of uh, Elon Musk. So out of uh, brain informatics, we are also doing some substantial research uh, in various uh, brain related diseases uh, using the machine learning or the other methods. And at the same time, we are also doing some research in the area of facial expression. I, I think I would like to show you some uh, video of uh, my our current facial expression research. Uh, you can see uh, neutral, happy, uh, and uh, we, we can easily identify. Actually, this type of facial expression research is very important. If you would like to understand the, uh, what is going on in human mind, uh, you can easily assess the level of the expressions. And this can be used to uh, in, in some uh, uh, Polish agencies. A uh, few years back, uh, uh, I, I can remember uh, a, a person who is very good uh, in his behavior, but suddenly he killed some uh, students in a university. So actually, if you can capture his images using the CCTV cameras and uh, uh, use this uh, to to analyze this, then uh, I think uh, we we can help a lot of to human civilization. So let's uh, take another video. So we can easily easily identify uh, his emotions. And so in this research, we consider 10 to 12 human emotions. So if you are interested later, we can share this type of research with you because we have a constraint of time. And then we are also working with uh, robotics. So in this research, what we have done in, uh, we have embed artificial neural network that the intelligence with the robot. And uh, so the, this Arduino's work as a controller, it can sig send the signal to the servo motor and also the DC motor. And this robot it uh, used to avoid any obstacle or the potholes. So this type of more research is going on with our with my research group and uh, we uh, have uh, also uh, working uh, work with uh, a new computing paradigm it is called believe rule base <coughs> excuse me and you can see how this uh, believe rule base expert system uh, can be utilized uh, to support symbolic ai or the integration uh, of uh, various models with this and the learning and the uh, explainable AI. 
so uh, let's uh, see that is the what is the context of introducing the belief rule based expert systems uh, you know the world is very much complex and it's non linear and it's stochastic and most of the problem is on structure in nature like the diagnosing disease or the managing disaster so we need a new paradigm of computing <coughs> So, for example, measles is an infectious disease. Basically, a uh, physician diagnoses the measles by looking at the signs and symptoms. The problem is uh, measuring the signs and symptoms. That is, we cannot measure them with 100% certainty. And there are some examples. So, in the belief, you know, any expert system consists of two components. One is the knowledge base and the other is the uh, inference engine. So, uh, actually, in this belief rule base, it's used the traditional uh, if then rule, <coughs> but it, it has a unique uh, belief structure and some. And, and this belief rule base uh, basically two types conjunctive and disjunctive behavior. So, there are some issues, uh, it becomes some combinatorial problem. So, uh, how can we address this type of problem? So, we are doing substantial research in this area as well and the, the inference procedure of belief rule based expert system basically consists of uh, four steps that is the input transformation rule activation weight calculation belief update and the rule aggregations and it's uh, the important this is it's not black box it's, it's glass box and there is a, a typical architecture of belief rule based expert system and here is some example of uh, how you can develop the uh, belief rule base actually uh, if there are plethora of methods, uh, you can do the survey or you can collect the data, then you can develop your initial belief rule base. And in order to develop a belief rule base, first of all, that is, you need to develop a, a belief rule base tree. So, for example, in this example, uh, A7 is the bronchonomia suspicion level, uh, whereas uh, A1, a chest in drawing so basically a one to a six these are the sign and symptom of bronchonomia so by looking at the sign and symptom of bronchonomia we would like to assess the suspicion of bronchonomia and this is a typical interface of belief rule based expert systems and uh, in order to measure the reliability of uh, the result generated from beliefs rule based expert system we have compared with the other uh, system like the fuzzy logic and the human expert opinion and we have uh, measured the reliability in terms of using the receiver operating characteristics type so from this example you can see area under curve uh, for in case of belief rule based expert is better than from fuzzy rule base of the human expert but still uh, we need to improve the accuracy level of belief rule based expert systems and then how about there are some uh, limitations uh, of belief rule base that is uh, the one i have demonstrated is non-trained and, and it suffered from similar problems of uh, symbolic uh, ai however it is more advanced because of the consideration of various types of answers so how can we uh, uh, go up, out uh, from these uh, problems now i will try to discuss so out of this we have a number of uh, research paper published say for example in the journal of medical systems of the expert systems and uh, most important things that you can see that we have tried to integrate the belief rule based expert system with other technology like the big data or the uh, internet of things and we recently completed a, a research project funded by swedish research council which basically <coughs> which integrate belief rule based is the internet of things so in, in this equation you can see if you can uh, uh, multiply it is not in the summation if you can multiply one things with other actually multiplication brings more synergy and and it, it ensure the hybridizations and hybridizations uh, ensure a system to transform into intelligent decision technology and basically in this project we have tried to uh, demonstrate this uh, implications of this idea. So here is the architecture uh, that is we have used the sensor to collect data from the physical world then put the data in the expert system then we 
uh, predict the flood water level for example here's the architecture and out of this research we have also developed some methods of uh, how to uh, identify the sensor anomalies and how to remove the anomalous data from the sensor if you can remove the anomalous data from the sensor then the prediction of flood water level is become more accurate you can see from this result and we have not confined our research only in the laboratory but we have gone uh, in the uh, experimental field to uh, test our systems and uh, we are also using this brbs to develop is orchestrators you know about the mac or the physical layer of the cloud level which i uh, that is the tax of a, a mobile user uh, assigned to whether it is a, it will be in the is computing or the cloud computing we are working in this area and then we have used the big data and we have used Hadoop ecosystem. We, we developed the library and use that to predict the flood water level. And also we integrate computer vision uh, with BRBS to assess the fatigue level of a uh, driver. And uh, you can see our result is better than uh, other methods. And out of this integrations philosophy, we have uh, published a lot of work and uh, we are also developing certain brb based federated learning methods so the, basically this is the integration part now i am looking at the learning why we need the learning in order you have seen that non-trained brb is not good to ensure the accuracy but if you can develop integrate the learning methodology with the knowledge based system then you can increase the accuracy so one of the limitation of the symbolic ai is its late of learning capability consequently the, the accuracy of ai system suffers significantly here we shall discuss how this limitation has been overcome so uh, uh, the objectives of any learning model is to reduce the error uh, between the observed output and the simulated output and <coughs> We, we have some developed some learning method and we applied this in the power uses epic net prediction of uh, data center here is some example but this this is example for the non-trained brb you can say accuracy is not good uh, but when we train then we sub subsequently increase the accuracy then we are getting the trained brb that is we able to uh, that is we able to make the system more adaptive we can change the no, knowledge base by uh, changing its optimal value of various learning parameters uh, so eventually you can gradually improve the accuracy level that is the reduce uh, and there are some issues when the problem become very complex multi-level then learning algorithm may become more complex we have also addressed those type of problem and also we have tried to incorporate the deep learning based approach within the inference mechanism of uh, uh, believed rule based expert system. And we, we have seen this type of approach also give us more accurate result in various scenarios. Mm -hmm. And one of the problem uh, with uh, believed rule based expert system that is the optimizations basically carried out uh, by taking account of two different types of approaches parameter optimization structure, there is some joint optimization. But if we can use the non-deterministic algorithm then we can ensure this uh, learning approach is more effective uh, because if you use the non-deterministic al algorithm uh, uh, but, but there are some issues in the non-deterministic algorithm that is that there is the exploitation and exploration problem how, again how can you develop the hyper optimization algorithm that will ensure the balance between uh, exploitation or expression so current evaluation algorithms also have uh, suffered from this type of problem so in this research basically we have tried to develop this type of algorithm which uh, allow the balance between exploitation and exploration so there's some example and out of this we have published a lot of publications in this area and then finally uh, we, i would like to introduce the how can you use uh, uh, I believe rule based expert system in the explainable artificial intelligence. So recently, we got a project, and one of my PhD students working in this area. Uh, in a, so, we are trying to develop a, a believe rule based expert system types of model uh, for explainable. Uh, uh, the, the reason is that there are a number of uh, 
explainable i a model like a shape <coughs> but the problem of this model they they are agnostic uh, method uh, but, but you can apply them uh, for any more machine learning model but, but the problem is that they cannot uh, enter into the inside of the uh, model so that's why uh, there are some challenges that is how can we develop a model which will able to enter into the insight of some methods so actually this is the problem of today's uh, machine learning mo model but we would like to shift uh, this model uh, accuracy and explanatory in this level so the problem with traditional machine learning model when you will consider to predict the pneumonia risk say for example low risk outpatient high risk but the, so will you uh, be considered or the physician will consider to use the neural network uh, to predict the safe uh, uh, most accurate model was a neural net safe to use neural net or real patients in this circumstances the answer is no so here's some example and we are trying to now develop the brb based explainable ai model and uh, in this type of model uh, if you use the back portion type of algorithm it has some for forgetting problem but we can able to uh, improve this model if you can uh, have uh, brb adaptive differential evolution types of models and uh, and the importantly uh, it's a uh, data centric and you require less number of data so here i would like to conclude and i have tried to give you a glimpse of the evaluation of artificial intelligence uh, and uh, discuss the different generation of artificial intelligence and their challenges and we, i have introduced a belief rule based expert system model how it can be fit with this so with this few words i would like to to thanks again the organization for giving me this book to talk and now uh, i will be happy to take some questions uh, thank you sir for your valuable session uh, we have uh, some questions to be answered in this session so let's take up the first question it is in front of your screen sir now so let me <coughs> uh, how are in artificial intelligence and machine learning related okay now i can see yes how are artificial and machine learning are related actually by machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence so uh, let's take up the next question so this question is from my own side so what is explainable in the explainable artificial intelligence where can this be applied uh, okay but explainable artificial intelligence try to address a bit because current machine learning uh, algorithm is very much good for ensure the accuracy but it's black box type in nature so uh, when you take the decisions that is what parameters or factors are responsible uh, to tie, take this conclusion it is not clear clear uh, cannot be clear to the decision makers so that's why we need the explainable ai because we need the explainability of the decisions so that's why we need some sorts of uh, that's the balance between uh, accuracy and explainability so this is the research challenge of explainable ai that is how you can develop such a model which will ensure at the same time accuracy as well as the explainability. So if you have a look at my talk or slides, then you can easily understand that is we are trying to address this problem. So uh, can you suggest some application areas where this explainable artificial intelligence can be applied? For example, uh, disease uh, is important things, but the safety is very important. Uh, and say, for example, disaster management, or the year pollution prediction. These are the some few examples where you can use the explainable AI. And we can investigate other areas where we can think of applying the explainable AI. But uh, before that, we need to develop a very robust methods uh, that will fit with the challenge of uh, explainable artificial intelligence. OK, sir. So uh, that is all for the day. Uh, I think there are no more questions from the audience. 
but if there is there will be any questions it will be posted in the uh, youtube channel in the in the chat box and which we can mail you later on and you can uh, easily answer them so thank you sir for your valuable session uh, it was a pleasure having you with us in this uh, web, international webinar series on engineering and sciences and uh, it was a great uh, having you here with us on this channel thank you so much sir okay thank you very much thanks a lot sir and for thank this you. nice session okay, sir. okay I, i'm a bit